And look who has appeared. Peter Pell. What's going on, everybody? National League, starts, National League starts winning, and all of a sudden, Peter Pell shows up. <laughs> right. He faded us hard, he told us. Didn't what did you guys say? Didn't you fade you us hard faded in the us? National League? No, I didn't take a bet. The only thing I took was Elias Diaz to hit a home run. That's it. That <laughs> no, was your one bet for the night. That. Right? At, at plus it's, 1,200. It's the most unpredictable game. It's an exhibition event. It's tough to actually handicap this game properly. Yes. So he likes by the way, just quick, let me let everyone know if for our – fan base uh pete part of just baseball just baseball show and we'll post the rest um not gambling advice pod arm bar and pod the whole deal he's been on with us before go ahead no i pete just wants to win he's not gambling pete wants to what win, did you so do that like... did you did you what did you place tonight no i didn't place any bets uh, i was on julio yesterday for the home run derby which was a gut-wrenching loss um, so I'm just watching this as a fan, just taking the day off from betting a little bit, just watching the all-star game. Well, you can hop on board with us, the NL money line train, which is fun because they haven't won in a billion years. And we legitimately do not chat about what our picks are. Maybe once in a blue moon, someone's like, yo, something was going on. Curious what your pick is. Maybe I'll hop on. But like today, for example, we all just sent our picks into our producer, Claudia, and then we're like, all right, let's go over our locks for tonight. And, and we'll mix up K props or or hitting props or over-unders and money lines and run lines, whatever. And just everyone went NL money line sweep, all four of us. And, and we're all looking around like, really? Uh, and it's 3-2. So just saying. I like it. I mean, you know, since 2000, the American League is 18-3-1 and one winning. So it wasn't just nine straight. They have dominated this format even before like when it mattered right for home field advantage and um i also saw something kind of interesting too if you guys were down to take the national league it might not end up working in this format but since 2000 the winner of the game covered the run line 59 percent of the time so if you went national league as the underdog i assume when you guys took it even no, getting it was even, it was, it was even it, but it they was opened as an underdog, so they, they opened at plus 105. Yeah, and I think a lot of people piled on, a lot of smart people like yourselves piled on the National League. They moved to even. Um, so a lot of people were asking if you like NL, should you take the run line? I'm like, historically, it's not a bad bet, it's probably not going to work out now unless Pete Alonso goes yard right here. But taking the run line in the All Star game has been profitable over the years because you're always going to get plus money and a much bigger plus money price. Mm -hmm. Is I'm a run line sucker. The reason I didn't go down that path was seven and a half for the run total. So I'm like, all right, clearly our bet MGM friends think this has got potentially four, three ish written all over it. Something like that. Right. And they're tempting everyone to go over. That's, that's why I think it was a, probably a good idea not to take the run line. You're just taking the national league and you're in a good spot right now. You're in a great spot right now. In a good spot. Has there ever been a walk off in the All Star Games? Anybody know? I feel like there has. Like a walk off Homer. Walk off Homer. Oh no! You, you, you know, sometimes when you ask something like that, I guess we can try and get it looked up. Jay, Jay might be able to find it. Jay behind the scenes right now, if you're watching, if you can do a little research for me. But I don't know. I mean, I could probably Google it. Yeah, Google try it. it. Google it. Is fifty nine percent enough for you? Is fifty nine percent? Do you feel like that's glaring enough that you'd be like? Historically, yeah. this I mean, is when there's nothing historic about this game in the sense of you could have the exact same players in this game, but they're not going to hit in the same order. The pitchers aren't going to pitch in the same order. So is 59% enough for you? That's such a good question because in a regular season game, right, 59%. <laughs> imagine if we were hitting 59% of our bets this year, we'd be, we'd own this place. But in, <laughs> in an all-star game, yeah, in an all-star game format, going through the trends, right, the American League has won 18 of the last 22. National League's winning right now, right? The run line is hit at 59%, probably not going to hit. So it's like, you can find a lot of these different trends for the all-star game, but at the end of the day, especially when these guys... You know, they're playing for their team. They want to represent their league, but they're not playing. The win-loss doesn't matter. So it's hard to cap that. It's more just that has happened 59% of the time. Does it mean it'll happen this time? No. But in the regular season, 59%, we're hammering that. 
I'm taking it. We're that's where I, that. And that's where I got into my <clears throat> that's where I got into my K prop parlays. When you can buy down those K's and the other guys buying down the K's based on the season and based on what that guy's done against that team that season again like it's like we're looking I'm looking at more like some seventy three percent numbers and I'm like I'll take double. How much can I take? Like if <laughs> But in a game like this, 59 just didn't seem like enough of a. Not enough. I, I, the reason why, the reason why I said that too was I thought it was surprising, right? You'd think that more of these all star games, it's all the best players in the world and it's supposed to be a close game, right? Like Scott even said, I was just thinking it would be 4 3. Like that's kind of the mentality around it. So the reason I brought up that stat is actually more often than not, these teams win with margin. Like, there's a lot of two-run wins that you wouldn't normally expect. So what the reason why I pointed that out was I was surprised. I thought it would be, of the last 20 years, maybe two or three times. Not more often than not, there's winning by two or more. Wander, Laddie, Kyle Tucker. Kimbrell. Last chance. Versus, versus Kimbrell. Kimbrell. It's why weird. Kimbrell? Somebody, it's weird somebody said that. Why does Rob, Kimbrell get Rob to Thompson's close? the manager, and he's like, hey, Craig, guess what? Here you go. <laughs> You're gonna... Kimbrell's also been awesome for the Phillies been fantastic lately oh there we go pete just jinxed it for us he's been fantastic (laughs) also three walk-off homers there you go three walk-off cleared up there have been three walk-off i'm gonna say 10 million game history you knew that yeah i definitely stan mutual and johnny callison last one 1964 nice All right, there so bottom go. of the ninth, baby, in Seattle. This is it. Good news is I know what it's like to hit a home run off of Kimbrel. Anybody else up here? Pete? I wish. No. 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 He threw too hard for you. <laughs> you need slider, he, guys. He walked um, you three <laughs> one slider. I'm scared. Dang it. So Pete he came right after me. <laughs> <laughs> Second half thoughts. About uh, teams, any- what you're excited to see. Tr- really, the big thing that most of our audience is dying to get more and more of, and we're like, oh, it's coming for the next three weeks. We'll be all over it is trades. They're just like, who's buying, who's selling, what's my team doing? Bring on Ken Rosenthal every day. We're like, we're on it. So I we just talked about it on the Just Baseball show, um, episode that we're releasing Thursday. A team that I'm a little bit reluctant to buy in on but all the numbers are pointing towards, I think the San Diego Padres are going to find out a way to make the playoffs. And so um, quota, or I think it's QPTA analysis. I don't want to misquote them, but basically they come out with your amount of wins versus your amount of expected wins. And they've been very good. The Padres are number three in that ranking. So they, a lot of the wins that they weren't able to get, if you ran the numbers again, more often than not, that they would win those games. They have the third best run differential in the entire National League, even though they're 43 and 47. You look at their team, and there's a lot of players in this game right now. Fernando Tatis Jr. should have been an all-star too. So you look at Soto, you look at Tatis, you look at Machado, and a guy like Blake Snell has been pitching to a Cy Young level. You expect a guy like Darvish, Musgrove to be better. They still have a good bullpen. They're still led by a really good manager in Bob Melvin. And I think the Diamondbacks, even though I'm on them over 74 and a half wins this season, which looks great, I think they have been overperforming. I think the Giants potentially could sell off some pieces, right? Are the Marlins going to keep winning at the same level? So I'm looking for the Padres to be a big second half team. And finally, those unlucky wins turn into lucky wins. But the reason I started off saying I'm a little bit reluctant is I watched them. And it's been a really <laughs> tough first half for them. You know, when they go down in games, it at least watching on television, the energy is not there. It looks like they're giving up. And when they're ahead in games, they've had a lot of blow-ups that were, have resulted in losses. But I look at the numbers and I say, this team is too damn good to be 43 and 47. And then I look at the picture in the National League and I think to myself, I think they can do it. So I'm looking at numbers on them. To bet on them for the second half. They they have been sloppy at times. They're losing some tight games that they shouldn't. And also, one of the betting trends with the Padres this year is 
they'll tease you, they'll blow a team out, they'll win like 12-4, 10-3, then the next day they lose 2-1. You know, they'll tease you on the, okay, this is what the offense is supposed to look like, pitching looking good, and then the next day you're like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is right now. Like, no, I mean, versus right. we've had a couple of Yankee people on today. They're just putting up two ones, twos, or threes every night. They're, they're not um, teasing their fan base right now. They're like, our offense sucks without Judge. The Padres are like, look, it, they'll have like the Soto homered, Machado homered, like all the big boys homer in the same game. And then the next day they get shut out by a number three starter. And you're just like, how is that even possible? Like a guy like Jake Cronenworth. Why does yeah. he have an OPS below 700, right? Even the no, stars. OPS, you said OPS or OPS plus? No, just OPS below OPS, 700, 700, right? I think his OPS plus is below 100 most yeah, likely. Yeah, he's below average hitter. Right? I mean, that's Jake Cronenworth. Jake Cronenworth was in the All-Star game a couple of years. Like, they just have a couple of players where I don't understand how you're not performing right now. And you guys know better than anybody. It's a long season, right? Second half, maybe you catch a second win, and then they finally start rolling and and show a lot of people why they were one of the preseason favorites to win the World Series. It's a long season. It's a marathon. And I think the Padres have too much working for them. Michael Waka is their four starter, right? And he's been fantastic this year. They're just too good. They're too good to be down this long. And it's going to be a plus money price for them to make it to the playoffs. They were a preseason favorite for a reason. That wasn't that wasn't an accident. And you know AJ Preller is going to be active at the deadline too. So talking about the Padres now versus in a month. Wander Franco. Oh. Wander. Nope. Jam. Deep jam. to right. Count. Monsado. Thankfully, I did. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm watching the game. No, I don't believe in jinxes. You can say whatever you want. No, you can. <laughs> we have no effect on the game. I I would. I, I always, when I'm betting on something, it's just, let's watch the game. Let's just watch the game. Let's watch the game. Well, yeah, let's talk watch about party. You. People want to hear from us. I want to finish I want to finish your – go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say the Padres might have too big of a hill to climb, though, because they're in the West, okay? Giants, D-backs, yeah. Dodgers. They, they still play them. I know it's less balanced – or less unbalanced, more balanced, but they still have to play those teams a lot, and those teams are better than them right now. No doubt about it. They're better than those teams. I look at the Giants, and they have a lot of aging veterans, and I don't think that their window is fully open yet. So I think at the deadline, even though there are a couple of games over 500, I don't think they're going to be buyers. I think they might actually cash in on some of these aging assets who've been good from, like Alex Cobb, who's an all-star. They could get a pretty penny for Alex Cobb. Now, I don't know what they're going to do, but I think it might make sense for their timeline long-term to trade off some of those guys, right? The Brewers have been competitive last year and they were still trading off guys i don't think the giants see their time as right now the diamondbacks right merrill kelly is on the shelf so you look at who's going to start games for the diamondbacks right now it's gallon who started and he's amazing no doubt about it but then you have a guy like tommy henry you have zach davies right you have ryan nelson not a lot of guys that i'm relying on over a you darvish a joe musgrove right so yeah the dodgers are going to run away with that division but then I look at the Marlins. Are they going to keep it up, right? I really like the Phillies this year. I feel like they're really hitting their stride right now. But there's still three teams that can make it. And when I look at the National League and I say, well, when I look at the teams, the Padres might have the best roster of any of the wild card teams remaining. And they're 43 and 47, and they're going to be a plus number. So that's why I'm looking at it from a betting perspective of potentially a team I can grab at a good number because, like I said, looking at the Dimebacks, are they going to be huge buyers? They might be. They might go grab an arm. But are they going to be the team that gets Shane Bieber? Or are they going to be the team that might get, get some Michael Lorenzen from the Tigers? Right? I don't know if they're going to make big splashes, but I do know that A.J. Preller, he got Juan Soto for a reason. You think he's going to stop? They're probably going to make big moves at the deadline again. So, I mean, they're at 82 right now. You could take the over. 82 and a half wins. That's probably what I'm going to do. But I, I want the plus money on them making the playoffs. Because I think they're either going to keep floundering or they're going to get really, really hot and make the playoffs. I think it's kind of one of those situations. Why them and not the Mets? It's another team. Have you, have you watched them? 
<laughs> I mean, no, no, but it's <laughs> it's the Mets. The Mets are in a similar situation because I do think that they have a lot of the qualities that I was talking about with the Padres, right? They have a really, really good roster. The thing is, I think the Padres have a clearly better roster, and I think the Padres have been much unluckier than the Mets have, right? The Mets have a negative run differential. They're led by 40 and 39-year-old pitchers. How long are they going to last as the season progresses? I look at the Padres. They're young, right? You don't have age slowing anybody down. So, And I think the Padres generally have a better team than the Mets do. So that's where I'm at on those. By the way, Steve Bartman was found in Seattle. Did you see him? I saw that. He, he reached. I don't know. That was, was weak, dude. Don't blame Bartman. Yeah, that's weak sauce, bro. You're not my dad. Oh, oh. oh, I am. You live in my house, son. No, my dad likes exit velocity. My dad. <laughs> I like exit velocity. Two hours ago, you joke. like you don't like exit velocity. <laughs> you were shitting on Louisa Rides yeah. for not having enough exit velocity. Yep. Fact I never fiction. said that. I I said I want that dude on my team. You said he's got low exit velocity. So what? I'm losing he gets my hits. voice. I like Perfect guys that get hits. <coughs> we'll have to take it. Julio's going to hit a walk-off right here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, here we go. Look, everyone's cheering. Here comes Julio. I mean, look like up. said. Watch the game. Wait, do you know who's up? Julio. Yeah. Are you listening? Are you watching? <laughs> I actually can't hear you that well. Why? I don't know, because he's down there. He's two people down. His earpiece isn't working very well. Oh, are you guys talking to me? No. <laughs> we're making nah, fun we're of just, Scott. We're, Scooter Brown down there. <laughs> we're just getting in fights. S- Scooter Brown. It's everyday life. All right. Thoughts here? Oh, man. The rally shoe. What's going to happen with Julio? He's going to look for a heater. Not that one. Are you? Are you? Because I'm not a all-star catcher. Are you looking on deck here going, hmm. I wonder oh, no. who's on deck. You're no. going right after this guy. Let's go. Get into your solo cup. Ooh-hoo. Yep. That was I a would've... good pitch. Listen, you gotta... Based on the home run derby, I would not have thrown him anything inside. <laughs> yeah. Every pitch was – it wasn't even on the plate, the home run derby. It was like here, and it was just like bip. I thought bip. The, most impo- the most impressive part of Julio's first round was his setup. He would just launch something to get right back into his load and then just right back to it. And it was the same thing where he'd settle. He would hit the home run, do a little shrug, settle, home run, settle, home run. It was so consistent. I just don't know how he fell off in the second round. I had him to win the whole thing. Was, was he just exhausted. taking all the way? Yeah, yeah. 41 home that? runs. I think he was looking breaking ball. I mean, how about poor Ooh. Pete Alonso? I know, poor Pete Alonso. I mean, his pitcher, I, I, I posted a tweet about his bullpen uh, or batting practice pitcher. Um, the wild thing, Rick Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> he's got swing and miss stuff. Yeah, like he gets chased outside of the zone. He's a his he's chase a, rate was high. Yeah. He's old school, down and away guy. It was sort of cutters. <laughs> two two to Julio. Wow, full count. Three two hammer right here. Three two hammer. Greg Holland said, "If we get in Game Seven of the World Series, bases loaded, three two, I'm throwing a slider." <laughs> Julio has Better to, to give here, up no? one than four. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. <laughs> what do you want here, AJ? Hammer time. Hammer time. Because he, he wants to win the game. He wants to win the game. Oh, he went heater. Okay. He See, wants, if you're... Julio wants to win the game. Right Hammer in or out of the zone. If you throw one that starts as a strike and breaks, he'll swing and miss. Game over. Okay. If he – yeah. If Plus, it's I don't cha- know who's on deck, but it's not Julio Rodriguez in Seattle, so I'll take my shot. If it's Chapman, Chapman is shaking off every time to to a fastball because he wants to step on it. He wants to stand there. He might even give him the sign. Just go. Might, <laughs> give him, <laughs> setting up a little low. Oh, ball four. That sucks. I mean, he walked, but you kind of want to see it end one way or the other right there. For What's me. he doing? Yeah, yeah but now you oh, got a guy that can this hit is a every fastball. Hitter. This is a dangerous hitter. His arms look even shorter. It's good in this. drama. It's good ninth inning drama. I'm into it. You guys see Thank the? Goodness. Huh? Thank God Scott's into it. <laughs> He's into it's it. It's a watch along, AJ. You're supposed I to. I thought talk that Jose Ramirez at bat against Camilo Duvall was maybe the best at bat in this whole thing. Camilo Duvall just blowing 102 mile hour heaters with 91 mile hour sliders, just dusts off the first two guys, and then J Ram swings through. An 0-1 slider 
and you're just like, how is anybody going to hit Duvall? And then he just smacks an opposite field double. Jose Ramirez, I think, it's funny, he's been the most underrated player yes. in baseball, like been one of that guy, now that tag. And the more I watch him, I'm like, he's still underrated somehow. I think Jose Ramirez is one of the best players in the sport. He gets he gets to every fastball. Everything. And he's oh. never he never gets out of his up. Oh, you, you go down and away and he has a tougher time. That's oh. a strong oh, there. Dang. That's danger. By the way, oh. Kimbrell does this his whole career. He is a Walks roller a coaster rope. closer, yeah. right? All closers walk tight ropes. Besides Mo. <laughs> no, not all closers walk some, tight Some ropes. are a little more reliable than others. Class A this year actually hasn't been as good, but last year you watch him, it's it's what are you talking about? Nasty. Last year he used to he was throwing like he would go like two guys on and then just go voop, voop, double play, game over. Ooh. Class A? Dude, no, look at his numbers last year. It was like three up and three down. Yeah, like, every it was time. like 90% this year, of his saves. It, it was, was like ridiculous. Cano, where like he doesn't, that's Unhittable. not saves, but this year is different. Nobody's this getting year, on. You, trust me, if you ask Terry Francona, he, his heart's feeling it. That's why his heart's. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Terry. Ha! Huh! No ball. Oh, Let's go. You're not getting that. Craig. Angel. Todd Tishner. It's not. Mind the plate. Is it? Oh, oh Salvi. It is. <laughs> I thought that was a strike. <laughs> <laughs> Campbell, hammer time. Uh, oh, oh don't. Will Smith, what are you doing? Even through all the years, that fastball still has so much life. It just zooms. Jump. It used to be at 100. Now he's yeah. 95 to 98. But it still has that same just like get up. It's an easy fastball to hit. Nervous fans in Seattle for this exhibition game. Got it. By you. Oh. By you. Ball game. By you. 93. 93. Because it's just got so much life. best fastball hitters in the game. Yeah. Dinner's on AJ. He's rich. And on money line for life. I just hyped up Jose Ramirez for him to strike out. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. Check his receipts. Were you good with that? What's that? 93 tailing up. Yeah. I said you got to get him out up. Yep. Do it up. That's a good game. Yes, Diaz. There he is, MVP. I had him. What, is he, had him. what does he get this year? What kind of truck is he getting? Is he getting like a Ford Ranger? I don't know. Is he going David Eckstein style? Taking the money and buying down the Chevy, the Chevy Tahoe? David Eckstein came to spring training with the Chevy Tahoe from the World Series MVP, and it was a Chevy Tahoe that roll roll down windows. <laughs> it was like so David X died. It was like not you know other dudes have it tinted out rims, whatever. Like they're he, covering uh, Diaz's eyes because he was right. I mean, going for the dub and the MVP. Hey, this is this is the moment of the year for Rockies fans. I'm not even joking. Uh, <laughs> Your catcher won MVP of the All Star game. And and you the, can trade him. Yeah, I, was just I don't know say, how long he's going to be a Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Trade him. He's going to be a Rocky were, for life now. Yeah. Yes. We've been on today for a billion hours. So thank you to, first off, the Foul Territory fans for hanging around with us, active in the chat, or wherever you're consuming FT, pod, socials, all of that, right? Um, thank you to the uh, Players House for hosting us, and then to Emerald Queen Casino in Tacoma is where we are right now for hosting us and the super quick turnaround it was nuts we were like flying out here not literally we were on the road um to get to tacoma so thank you for hosting us here for our watch party this was awesome first time doing this pete thank you for swinging by dude thanks for having me check out all his stuff just baseball media 